the ride along. Do IA firms count this as experience or training? In this video, I'm gonna tell you what a ride along is, why you definitely wanna do at least one, and step by step, how to do one. Starting now. This is Adjuster TV. Hey, it's Matt here with Adjuster TV, and for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as a cap property independent adjuster, subscribe now. Click on the bell notification and you'll be on your way. And thanks to Bryant from YouTube who says, nothing like down to earth, educated audio slash video from an experienced adjuster to shorten the drive from Washington back to Texas. These tips and strategies from you are entertaining and extremely beneficial. As a new adjuster for seven months now and getting my first taste of cat this past November, I've realized with the 32 claims closed in Seattle that I just ran in 14 business days that I ran the business it didn't run me. Thanks, Matt, for taking time out of your day to educate the adjuster noobs. Anytime, Brian, and thanks for watching. Okay, so what is a ride along? The simple definition is that you, the newbie, tag along with a working adjuster in the field as they work their claims. Now, why would you wanna do this? If you spent any amount of time trying to get more information about this field, you may have heard about something called a ride along. You probably also heard that you must do a ride along because the IA firms want to see that you have some experience. I just want to clarify that right now. You don't get experience doing a ride along. That's not what it's for. And it's also not really training. So what were they talking about then? A ride along where you actually do work is a mentorship and it's quite different than the kind of ride along that we're talking about in this video. Okay, Matt, so what is a ride along? A ride along is basically a job shadow. You're not writing estimates and you're not interacting with insureds. Now, why do you wanna do this? You do a ride along so you can see a working adjuster in action and decide if this career is right for you. It's pretty simple. It's not to get hands-on training. And again, it's not to get experience that you can take to an IA firm. So when you approach somebody to ask them if you can ride along with them, you have to set very clear expectations with them right out of the gate as to what you want to get out of this and how to conduct it so that you get the most benefit and you don't get in that adjuster's way while they're trying to earn a living. Make sense? So how do you do a ride along? Number one, First, you have to find somebody willing to let you tag along on their next deployment. You network on social media and you can find people who may be open to letting you ride along with them in groups like the IA Path community, as well as the Adjuster TV private Facebook group, or they'll learn to adjust Facebook group, or even Jeremy Reddick's Claims Adjuster Success Network on Facebook. And there are dozens of other IA-centered uh, groups on Facebook as well, in addition to LinkedIn. But I warn you, to spend some time in the group before posting up that you're looking for a ride along opportunity. Get a feel for the kind of people in that group because you wanna be sure that A, you don't get slammed by a bunch of salty know-it-alls and internet lawyers, and B, that the person you ride along with knows what they're doing and not everybody does. You can also talk to the person who got you interested in this job. Tell them you're definitely interested and then ask if you can tag along on their next deployment. If they don't wanna do it, then ask them if they have a buddy who might be willing. And you can even reach out to IA firms and ask them if they know anybody who likes to take adjusters on ride-alongs. And don't be shy. If they say, no, they don't, say thanks and just hang up. Sometimes you just gotta be creative and reach out to people. Okay, number two. So what are the expectations you need to have when you go on a ride-along? You have to be prepared to travel to any place in the country. This is a major part of what we do as CAT IAs. If you post up on social media that you're looking for somebody to ride along with in the Nashville, Tennessee area, you're gonna get crickets. You have to be willing to drive from Dallas to Seattle because that's what we do. And if you don't wanna do that, then you know maybe this isn't for you. And by the way, if you're from Dallas or Seattle, give us a thumbs up in the comments. And you also have to be prepared to go on short notice. You have to be ready to go when the work is there and not at your convenience. This again is very much a big part of the Cat IA lifestyle. You can be planning a big birthday party next weekend for your wife, but if you, as an IA, get the call to go work the Tuesday before, you're gone. You just have to move the party up or take your first special dinner when you get home. That is the lifestyle. And again, if you want to do a ride along on your own schedule, when it's convenient for you, then maybe this isn't for you. And you got to understand that you can't just go for a ride along right at the moment you decide you want to. If it's not storm season and maybe there wasn't a hurricane, all the working adjusters are taking time off. You'll have to wait until there's work. And you have to be prepared to pay for your own expenses, including hotel, food, and travel expenses. You're gonna do this at your own expense. The adjuster, unless you're related to them, isn't gonna let you sleep on their floor uh, or in the other bed in their hotel room. And I certainly wouldn't, which, you know, I'd be weird. If you have to, save up 500 bucks so you can pay for fuel and hotels while you're doing your ride along. Remember, IAs have to pay our own expenses, and this will give you a little taste of having to spend money 
to make money. Number three, understand that a ride along will likely not carry much weight with the IA firms. I've seen a lot of resumes with four ride alongs, blah, 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 as all of the experience that the adjuster has. But doing a ride along will provide you with an important window into our world, which if you ask me is a lot more valuable as a first step into building this career right. So how do you do a ride along? First, do not under any circumstances ask to be paid to ride along with an adjuster. If you help them in some way and they wanna pay you something, it's on them. This experience is to help you decide if you want to get into this career and that's it. However, I personally would offer to assist a working adjuster by carrying and setting up their ladder and doing anything else that they need extra hands for. Printing things out, collating things, I mean, just menial work that, that if it takes them 15 minutes to do it <clears throat> out of their day and you can do it for them, then you're gonna be, this is how you'll be helping them out the most. Do not offer to write estimates for adjusters because then they'll have to take extra time to show you how they want it done. And that's not the purpose of the ride along. Keep it short. Two to four days is probably more than enough to know if this is right for you. In fact, you could probably do this over a long weekend and not miss much or any work from your regular day job that you haven't quit yet. And absolutely dress the part. Khakis and a solid non-pastel colored golf shirt and no tennis shoes. Leather hiking shoes or boots are a great option that work well on roofs. I wouldn't normally suggest buying any gear before deciding if this is right for you, but picking up a pair of cougar paws might not be a bad idea for safety's sake. Question of the day. Are you an experienced adjuster who'd be willing to let a curious newbie tag along for a couple of days with you? Give us a yes or no in the comments below. And for much more information about being a cat independent adjuster, head on over to adjustertv.com. And if you got value from this video, you can help me create more videos just like this by hitting the round subscribe button. Wondering what to watch next? Check out these videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm. Okay, joke of the day. What time did the man go to the dentist? 2.30.